Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. Today what we're gonna do is um, start to make an art journal. And I've never made one before, so another new thing for me, and I'm not gonna claim that I know how to do this or that I'm doing it right, and I'm sure other people have brilliant ways of doing it, and I think that's great. This is just the way I'm gonna do it. So, I have some uh, papers from a Crayola creative lettering inspiration pad that um, my daughter got a long time ago. She just never really was into it or used it. So I'm just going to use some pages out of that. I have some <clears throat> a watercolor paper pad. I have mixed media paper that's going to go in there. And I am using um, a cereal box and I've cut this at nine and a half by six and a half. I believe that's what I did. <laughs> yes. Remembering, right? Yes. Nine and a half by six and a half. A little bit bigger than my normal journal just because that gives a little more room to play. So, and I have some deli paper and just some regular tea dyed paper and, you know, just all different papers. I have some fabric because we'll be using that to like hook these two pages together so that when it's sewn into the signature, it will be facing the right direction. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome day. I just um, probably really didn't need to turn on the camera to do this because I think that a lot of you could definitely figure this out obviously or all of you whatever and um but I just thought well that's what I'm doing today and I probably am not going to get to much else I've just had a real busy morning and so um yeah this is kind of where I'm at I didn't have another thing I wanted to do because I really wanted to do one of these for ages so I was like I'm just gonna do it <laughs> it's kind of like my last journal it's just gonna be a watch and see what comes out maybe a disaster may turn out great, but we're just going to play and make an art journal. So yeah, hope you guys are doing awesome and healthy and safe and having nice weather. We're having very nice weather today. Hallelujah, I'm ready. It's, we've just had lots and lots of rain and kind of unseasonably cold weather here the last little bit. So looking forward to some nice weather. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little glue right down the side, and I know I'm going to cover up part of these letters, but I just thought these might be fun. They were meant to be used, like, to, um, you know, learn how to write certain way or whatever, but I think it'd be fun to be a background for some kind of collage or, I don't know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, right? So that's what I thought would be fun. I hope you guys like this idea and are into it. You're all pretty awesome, no matter what crazy notion I get in my head. So thank you, thank you for going along with me on stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my uh, fabric scissors. I think I'm gonna tear that just a tiny bit smaller. When I tore this, it's just cotton fabric. When I tore it, I wasn't sure, you know, exactly how much I would need so I kind of just winged it let's see if we can get this to tear straight <laughs> now that I have part of it glued I just pulled it right off of the thing and we can use that stamp on it um use little tidbits of it whatever so so I'll probably go ahead and try to tear more of that this same width And you could definitely stitch this on if that's what you wanted to do. I think I might just glue them. I don't know. I'll see. I'll see what I think once I get, you know, doing more pages, what I want to do. I just thought it'd be fun. Just needed some, some change of, you know, just do something different sometimes. So I thought I would make an art journal now after making my um, junk mail journal. Oh, and I thought I would probably use some junk mail for this one too because I've always got plenty of that. Okay, so then what I will probably do is just leave a tiny gusset. I don't need a huge one because these aren't like super massive thick pieces of paper, but just so that... Um, 
and I'm still could have gone even smaller, huh? Oh, for this one, we're gonna let it go. Uh, yeah, I could have used. I'm gonna overlap this just a little bit. No, I'm not. <laughs> I can't. I can't decide. I'm sorry. Like I said, all new to me. I just really wanted to try this out. I may keep this one. I know I said that about the last one too. I don't know. It just depends. If I don't think it's like very good, then I probably will just keep it because I can use it regardless. Okay, and then I'm gonna snip that off. Yeah, I may stitch, go ahead and stitch this just because I feel like it'll be a little bit more substantial if I do that. So if I stitch, um, it'll just be, you know, like right along there just to hold it a little bit better because that paper is not super thick either. But anyway, so see now it can be sewn into the signature um, the right direction and I don't lose a bunch of, I mean, I did lose a little bit by cutting the pages to the right size, but I just feel like I like having the right direction there. So just a little something different. And then our watercolor paper. I'm going to do the same way. And the watercolor paper is really the reason that I um, decided to do the pieces of fabric because um, it's so thick. And I thought if you fold this paper in half, you know, you're only gonna be able to use a couple sheets per signature because um, it's just so darn thick. So how long is this anyway? It's 12, so I'll cut it at six which is about perfect, right? And then, yeah, it's a little more than six, but I'll cut this one off at six. I've got a glare on my cutting board, so I can't have to like, turn my head to figure out. I don't think that cut straight. I guess it did. Okay. So, um... Yeah, I just thought it really needed to, and that is mine. Hmm, great, okay. So it didn't have to hardly cut any of that water paper color up, paper off, which makes me very happy because I was trying to do a size that would allow me to, um, you know, keep as much of the paper as I can, obviously. And you know, you don't have to do it this way. You can fold it in half. I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying I'm doing this the right way. I'm just doing it the way I want to do it. So. <sighs> That's not gonna work. I'll just leave it the width it is, it's fine. <laughs> It'll be a little wider than I wanted, but it's fine. Should have probably figured that out before I tore it all right. Try to kind of find the middle at least that might help. Help me get it glued on there better. So I just put a little crease in it and I'm gonna not do it directly on the center. And I don't want to pull it too taut. I mean, I kind of was doing that, so that's probably not a great idea. You don't want it to, like, be bowing your paper, so just kind of loosely get it down on there. And you can use Fabri-Tac if that's what you want to use. And I'm just going to leave that little gap again. Hard to know which way to turn it. Oh, and I fixed my art glitter glue. <laughs> it definitely shouldn't have tried those different needles going in there, but I just thought, hey, that would be a good use for those. But 
the one, those ones that come with it are the best or you know some type of stainless steel little pin type needle thingy is the best to go in those And you can also just buy like, I think I might've said this, I don't know, my video cut out on me once already today. <laughs> so um, I just had started it, luckily I didn't get very far, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but um, I can't remember if I told you in this video or not, you could just get some type of art journal or use like that mixed media pad of paper as an art journal. And I got that at Walmart, so you can get them for a decent price. You don't have to use like super expensive, you know, watercolor or mixed media paper. You can just use what you want, have fun, and just try different things. I just thought this might be a better way to <laughs> not get it so thick at the spine that, you know, we can't have hardly any paper in here. It's still not going to be able to have a ton just because the papers are thicker, but. Okay, so maybe we could use another piece of um, just regular tea dyed paper. I could even do like a smaller one. That would be kind of good. That way you could have some variety. You don't have to keep them all the exact same size, which would be nice. If one day you just felt like doing a little doodle or a little practice something, that would work. Kind of like how we did in the last journal. Sorry, I needed a sip there. And some deli paper I thought would be fun. I mean, obviously, you know, some of these are not perfect for painting, but I just think it'll be fun to have different kinds of textures and stuff. Okay. This one I might just cut in half. reason I, I find it tricky to fold that deli type paper. Okay. And I'm thinking this journal should hold about three um, signatures. I'm not going to do my normal like 12 pages in it. Um, I usually do like 12 to 15, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think one of these would be fun. This is just junk mail. Um, so this will only be in one signature because I only have the one. But um, I was thinking you could, you know, cover it entirely, like collage all over it. So that, that one's going to go in. I mean, you can paint it to a gesso or whatever to calm it down. It's a little wow. But, um, yeah. So it has... Oh, it does. That's my address on. <laughs> How am I going to cover that? Kind of permanently, you know? Maybe I can put a piece of this type of paper on it. One of those would fit. I'll just kind of do that centrally to cover that up. All right, I'll leave it like that for now. Um, let's see, what else? Let's do another mixed media page. This uh, paper is really cool. I didn't even realize it when I bought it, but it has this, you can pull these pages out and put them back in because the way the little the little tabby doos are <laughs> the tabby doos. So yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. And 
and then you could just pop them back in, which is awesome because then you don't have to worry about those spirals. So I think if I do the Marguerite Miller Collage Challenge next year, I'll get something like that because that is really cool. You could take it out and do the um, collage and not have to worry about those spirals and then put it back in. So super awesome. All right, now I'm taking them off and I will be saving these because these would be kind of cool, coffee dyed and then used in little bits here and there on things. So they're just different perforations. And again, that was just Walmart. It was like $8, I think, which I don't think is bad at all for a, a nice weight of paper. It was, well, it's, um, you guys probably saw, but it's 90 pounds or 185 GSM. So yeah, it's a nice weight. I liked it. Thought that would be good for, sorry, I just hit my light bulb and art journaling is kind of all new to me too which is kind of weird because you know I used to paint murals and do all that kind of stuff but I've not done hardly any mixed media or um, you know like art journal type things before so it's really all new to me so I don't have you know, all the fancy tools and things, so. And I don't know all the tricks, but I'm just doing what I like to do. Okay, let's see what else do, should we do. We can start another one. So let me see, how many pages is that? Um, I'll say two, three... Five, six, seven, eight. That probably is definitely enough. Because the thing is, you want to leave a little more room in the journal. Um, if you're going to be collaging all over the pages or doing that kind of thing, it's just going to get thicker naturally. So, and what I do is just kind of with this painter's masking paper because it's so. I need to do it longer than that. Um. It's just kind of awkward to try to cut it on the cutter. I cut a piece off first and then I'll cut it on my cutter. And then yes, I have scraps, but they can be used for other stuff, like collage. Starting new one, duh. And we'll do one of these again. Since I've got loads of these. And I'm gonna put it in a different spot this time. And I don't want the deli paper right with that. So let's see if we've got another piece of junk mail we could use. It'd be kind of fun to do a window envelope in there. And yeah, if you don't like the cutter, <laughs> sorry. I try not to do it too crazily, but you know. Oh, I need to cut a little more off so that it's nine inches. Okay. I keep trying to grab the one I already did. And we'll just put that in as a page. Do some different stuff. What else? Some more watercolor paper. This one I might just have to keep because I want to play in it. <laughs> but we'll see. So 
Now that turned out the same size. That's so weird. I don't know what I did last time. I'm sure you guys guys saw me mess it up, but and it is right about nine, isn't it? glued again we can always cut it all right sorry I don't have many stories to tell today I obviously don't normally have many stories to tell but every once in a while something goes on I like it when it's calm and quiet around here So what I might do is go ahead and keep working on these and I'll come back when I have more of the pages done. I just kind of wanted to show you like basically what I'm going to do so you could uh, get an idea of how I did the pages because I know people like it when you do more of a start to finish sort of video just so they can see how you do certain things and again I am not an expert at this, so I'm not claiming to um, be right or whatever. <laughs> Just, I'm sure there's loads of ways. All right, so I will keep going on this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have gotten my signatures all ready to go. Um, I was going to kind of show you guys what I did. You pretty much saw this this first one. Um, the second one, I'm going to iron this piece of canvas. It's just kind of over this, just so it doesn't have that fold mark there. But I thought it might be fun to have a piece of canvas in there. Um, these are all the same as what we were doing. There's a piece of just regular like sketch paper. Um, I put some watercolor uh, postcards by Arteza in this one and I hooked them together using the fabric. So there's two of those. Um, this is that manila drawing paper that I use for other stuff. And that's the other side of that one. And then this one I did, um, this is an envelope, which obviously you can see that, but I left a tuck spot and to the flap of the envelope, I put a piece of um, sketch paper there so you could do actually a fairly large sketch or two sketches or whatever um that's that and then an envelope yeah so that is my signatures for my journal and then it's a good thing you guys weren't actually waiting for me the whole time that I was gone <laughs> because I ran to Hobby Lobby and everything else. Um, I needed some more, I wanted more canvas because I thought after I put that little piece of canvas in there, I was like, it would be fun to have um, like the outside covered maybe in canvas. So I got another piece and I have painted my uh, cereal box just with white acrylic paint, nothing fancy. And I'm going to put the canvas right here, and it's kind of a little wonky in size. That's why I um, painted it, because I figured I'll probably need to do a little, um, whatchamacallit, trimming and fixing. Because as everything, people always say, if you tear something, it tears straight, you know, fabric. And no matter how straight I try to snip it to get it started, it always seems like it tears crooked. So, and that's clearly what happened that this tore a little crooked. So we're just gonna put a little bit of ink around here so that if it, sh whatever shows will be covered. And then I will probably stitch around it too once I get um, the paper on the inside. So 
so yeah, my daughter and I <laughs> ran to Hobby Lobby, which is always very dangerous because the two of us could probably, or, you know, would like to buy everything in there. Of course, we cannot do that, but it is fun to go ooh and ah anyway and get a couple of fun things. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to trim it after the fact. I love the torn edge much better than the the cut edge, but I don't know how else to get it. This one's a little bit straighter. This side's just very wonky. There's the corner. Yeah, even that side's going to have to be trimmed a little bit. So I think what I'll do is just get it on there. I'll get it trimmed right. And then, um, you know, try to fray it out a little. It'll fray with time anyway, but let's see. I was just hoping that it would fray a little bit better than that. Oh, this one's not open. There's my open one. I still have a stack of paper over here. I did clean up the rest of the stuff, though. <laughs> I always have a stack of paper on my desk, it seems. I don't think there's any way around that when you're doing this. I had a comment. Somebody asked me if I was a hoarder. <laughs> it's like, no, not a hoarder. I um, do have a lot of craft stuff. And, you know, it does get around about on the floor, but it all has places to go when put away. It's just that sometimes when I'm in the middle of making a journal, I get you know, stacks of stuff here and there because I don't want to put it all back and then just have to get it out again the next five minutes. So I usually leave it out. And then after I finish a journal, I, um, you know, clean it all up and then start over again. But it's a never ending thing. The rest of my house is definitely much cleaner than my craft, craft area as far as having stuff sitting around. was a very interesting question to ask somebody, but okay. Definitely not a hoarder. I mean, there's things I hoard that I like to use, you know, or that I think are special that I don't want to use quite yet or whatever, that kind of thing. But I think we all do that a little bit when we're crafting. I'm a messy crafter, how's that? That is for sure the truth. Definitely gets messy sometimes. Sorry. Of course, I come home and the garbage truck shows up. <laughs> ah, it's always like something, I swear. So, apologize. It's going to be noisy for a minute here. I'm going to close my window. Hold on just a second. Things are so loud. It's crazy. So let's see. This isn't too awful as far as this side. So we can trim this. Um, I might have to kind of trim the fringe all the way just to make it you know, look kind of even, even though I love the fringe. That's some tough canvas, man. Okay. Still looks wonky, but I think it's it's just something about the way this is um, on the corner. Okay, so then this side has quite a bit hanging over. I just kind of do section by section usually, or at least that's what I try 
to do. Um, sometimes I put glue all over it and I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't want to do it like that, but I usually try to go section by section just so that it's a little bit less likely to get it crooked and not be able to peel it up or whatever. I just want to get this ooh, wiped off of there. Yeah, I'm excited about making this one. I think it will be fun. Try to really get the edges the most because obviously that's where it's more likely to peel up. Oh, is that really that crooked? It is. See, so that's the problem. When you're doing a whole piece like this, it's always very tricky to get it. dips down just a little bit over there. Trying to get any bubbles and kind of maybe scooch it up just a little bit if possible. And some things just don't always work out perfect, it just is the way it is. And like I said, I'm sure there's better ways. Then I'll probably take some, um, what do you call it, watercolor paper and put it on the inside. I just think that would be a nice heavy weight paper to put on the inside. Try to at least fray it a little bit. Looks a little bit better when it's frayed, I think. There you go. If you're wondering why this big thing is on here, since I'm always fighting with it, it's to keep everybody in my house from using my <laughs> my fabric scissors for stuff that's not fabric. It just makes them, you know, look at them again like, why is this thing hanging on here? I think I'm just going to actually leave that fringe. I like it. Okay. So that's that part. And then we're going to put watercolor paper. And the problem is I don't have a big enough, like, single sheet of watercolor paper. So what I think I will do is do, like, one side. I'll leave the spine, and then I'll probably put, like, another piece of canvas over the spine here or a different kind of fabric, something like that, just so that, um, you know, I don't have weird gaps or like trying to get two pieces together in the middle and all that. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just do either side. And actually, no, there's not enough that way, so it has to go that way. And let me just make sure these measure the same because that's always a possibility that they can be a little bit different from each other. So 
So that's pretty much six and a half right on. And then just under nine and a half, of course. So this will make a nice thick cover. Should be nine. Okay. And I can use those other pieces for something else. Trying to make sure it's straight all the way up and down. Okay. It's nine and a half. Oh my gosh, you guys are probably yelling at me. Well, those will be some fun little pieces to use for something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nine and a half, Amy. So I need to cut it the right direction. It needs to go six and a half and then nine and a half. Yeesh. Some days. So, six and a half this way. I really just want it on that line. So make sure it's not perfect. And then nine and a half. I want that. Uh, it's the sticky part of the paper that holds it in the pad. I want that cut off. So, nine and a half. Ding dong. But I guess uh, you can see everybody makes stupid mistakes, so I'll do it at some point. I just do it more often than most. Nine and a half. Okay. That looks better. right now. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I know I said almost. I think that'll work good though once it's stitched and everything. This one's a little bit, quite a bit smaller. What is this measure? Yeah, it is under six and a half. It must just be how it butts up against that. Well, let me get one glued on and then I'll cut the other one just so I don't mess up. Yeah, they had Tim Holtz on sale at Hobby Lobby too and I don't know if that's, I mean, it should be everywhere. So that's kind of fun because I don't hardly ever go in there and find Tim Holtz on sale. So I got some of his um, collage paper, the numbers and stuff, and then I got another set of the field notes, those die cuts, because those were great. I've almost used that whole pack. They're just, I like the look of them and the size of them and everything about them. So... Yeah, I got another set of those because they're very fun. That's rare. I hardly ever go through a whole pack of really anything because I usually, you know, lose interest in it or something. <laughs> or, you know, something about it, the size or whatever. It doesn't fit what I'm doing or something. So it's kind of cool to have a set like that that was just awesome. Yeah, I think this will be great for 
painting on or whatever for the cover. That'll be really nice. And then I'll just stitch around there and that will pull that in tighter. Okay, so this side is perplexing me a little bit. It feels like it's just this top, like this, um, the seam thing that's in here, this bump in the cereal box is wider at this end than it is at this, the other end. I'm just going to cut off a sliver. See if that makes it better. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of this. This is something that you're interested in watching me do this art journal or do you think I should sell it so somebody else can do it? What do you guys want to see? I'm kind of in the mood to do different stuff than what I've done for the last four years. <laughs> I think I just go through that like I just need to do something different for a while thing. It's always an evol evolution in art, I think. I don't think all of us, I mean, some people probably do stick with a similar thing they do all throughout, you know, like a lot of people paint their whole career and that's all. I just um, tend to have that kind of brain where I get bored with the same thing all the time. I kind of wish I liked the same thing all the time because then I wouldn't have so many art supplies <laughs> from all my various things. I don't have a whole lot of like um, paints anymore though for doing um, murals like I used to do because I haven't done that in years. mostly have paper stuff because that's been kind of an ongoing thing for a long time. Okay, I think I'm going to let that dry. I don't want to go folding it just yet because it needs to get a little bit drier. But I thought maybe this, oh, you know what, I can't even really do Oops. that thing. Um, yeah. That one's upside down. <laughs> what did I do? I don't know. But um, I'm thinking I should gesso this. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Or, um, Put a little gesso on this, but I probably should iron it first. So let's go ahead and put some gesso on this. I just think it's um, like even collaged, it might be hard to cover because it's so wow. Especially um, in the spine area because if the rest can definitely be covered, but if it's stitched in, you might see part of the spine, uh, you know, showing just because you can't get all the way in there. So I thought if nothing else, even if I put paint just so here, that'll help cover up that yellow a little bit. I guess unless you wanted the, that super bright, but it's really bright. It's really bright. I thought a little gesso there might be a good thing. Okay, and it might take, you know, another coat to get that covered to a level of satisfaction. <laughs> I just got thinking about that when I was um, 
looking at all this stuff sitting there, I'm like, that would be really hard once it's sewn in. Because I was going to sew this stuff in before doing anything with it. That's if I decide to do something with it. I may just, you know, sell it as a mostly naked type journal. I'm going to paint some gesso over my address. Because that's another good way to get rid of that. And then we'll let that dry. Oh, I should do the spine of this too. Um, I don't have anywhere to set it, so I'll just hold it like this. And I just dumped my brush all the way down in the gesso. That was good. This is not the way to do this. <laughs> You'll have, it'll be easier for you to do these type of things than for me because you'll have time you can let one side dry and then do the other side and you know be smart about it just think it would be a good way to cover that up so even if it's collaged whatever you're collaging over it doesn't have to be super dark pieces and I may end up doing more of it. I don't know. We'll see. But at least that part in the spine will be done so that it's not um, you know, impossible to cover. Okay. So now I have to clip this somewhere to dry. Grab a clip. Let's see. set it on this bottle over here. Sorry. There we go. It's between two bottles <laughs> that I have sitting over there. All right, so I'll probably stop there just because I don't really have anything else I can do until those um, pieces are dry because I want to, like I said, sew in the signatures. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there and I will see you guys next time on Monday. So have an awesome Memorial Day weekend. Um, have fun with family or whatever you like to do on Memorial Day. And we will chat again soon. Love you guys. Bye.